pastors, theology students, and congregation members for attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter. It is nice to see you. My name is Park Song Ho, and I'll be your host today. I would like to thank everyone who is attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, which is being broadcast to the whole world. Now is a time of the fulfillment of revelation, and it is a time of recreation in which the people's hearts and thoughts are created anew. What will they be created by? It's by the seed of God and the blood of Jesus. God's seed, Jesus' blood, and life are in the Word. And receiving and eating the Word is to receive God's seed, Jesus' blood, and life. This is how we can be recreated and reach eternal life. By the word of testimony today, I hope everyone will have a precious time of becoming reborn. Before we go on with the testimony, let us first pray before God with a united heart. Our Father God, we truly thank you. We sincerely thank you for your love and grace you're giving us today. We also offer up all gratitude to you for allowing us this precious time to preach the testimony on the revelation of the Old and New Testaments by chapter through Shincheonji Online Seminar. Please show your grace upon all the pastors and believers from around the world so they can give you all glory with their perception of your precious word. Please also give your limitless love and grace to the instructor who will be testifying to your word today. And allow true understanding to all the believers from around the world who receive this word. I believe this seminar will be a time filled with your Holy Spirit and grace and we ask that you only fill it with what belongs to you instead of what belongs to man. We pray all these things with gratitude in the name of Jesus. Amen. Testimony on the Revelation of the Old and New Testaments by Chapter Following the last lesson, we'll hear the testimony of God's Word through a lesson titled, Intermediate Lesson 14, God's Purpose. I hope all of us can clearly perceive God's purpose of today, the time of the fulfillment of Revelation, through the testimony, and take part in the Kingdom of Heaven and eternal life that have been promised. We'll welcome up the head instructor of Yosu Church from Peter Tribe, will testify to God's word today. To all the pastors, theology students, and believers from all over the world whose hope is in heaven and eternal life, greetings, it is nice to meet you. My name is Kim Chung-gil, the head instructor of the Yesu Church of the Peter Tribe of Shincheonji Church of Jesus. I would like to extend a sincere welcome to all of you for attending the Shincheonji Online Seminar. The Word of God all of you and I will share today is Intermediate Lesson 14, God's Purpose. The main reference will be from the contents of Jeremiah chapter 31, Matthew chapter 13, Luke chapter 22, Revelation chapter 7, Revelation chapter 19, and Revelation chapter 21. It will be nice if all of you can listen to today's lecture and find out the answer to what God's purpose is. As we can see through the Bible, God has been working for about 6,000 years to accomplish His will and purpose from the time of Adam until now. Then, 
For what reason and purpose has God been working for until now? In order for us to understand the purpose that God intended to accomplish, let us first examine the story and position of God through the events of the world of Adam and the history of the Bible. God, who is the Creator, created the heavens and the earth and all people. But a created being, the serpent, deceived Adam who inherited the heavens and the earth and took away all things that God had created, even people, and made them his own. So God had to leave the world that he had created because of Adam's sin. It has been about 6,000 years since this work has taken place. Then, let's think about the position God was in. Even if people lose even one thing they cherish, don't they struggle to find it? Then, how would God's heart be where everything He had created Himself and even the hearts of the people were taken away from Him by the serpent who was the created being? With God being in this position and God who left this world, God's purpose is to work to regain what was lost. And because God recorded His purpose in the prophecies of the four Gospels and the Book of Revelation, God's purpose will be completely fulfilled when the new covenant revelation promised by Jesus is fulfilled. Then, what is the purpose of God who has been working for 6,000 years? First, it is to get rid of the first heaven and the first earth, which are the traditional churches that have been corrupt since Adam's sin, and to create a new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes. And second, it is to capture and lock away the dragon who has taken away the whole world and destroyed all nations. Third, just like how God's will will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven, through God and heaven in the spiritual realm, becoming one with God's new ki kingdom and new people, what will be fulfilled is the spiritual realm and physical realm will become one, which is marriage, and God will reign. Because God's purpose is today's main content, the three purposes of God that I just talked about will continue to be displayed at the top of the screen. And starting now, with the Bible being our standard, we will learn why God's purpose is this and through what process it is accomplished. Let's go through them one by one. God made a covenant with His chosen people in every era. Among them, He made a covenant with the physical Israelites, the descendants of Abraham who followed Moses from Egypt. Exodus 19, verses 5 to 6 of the Old Testament is where this content is well explained. Let's read these words together. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasure possession. Although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak to the Israelites. The words you read is the content of God's covenant with the physical Israelites. If we take a brief look at the content of the covenant, he said, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, 
you will become a kingdom of priests and a holy people. So, this covenant was conditional. Then, shouldn't the physical Israelites listen to God and keep the covenant? Then, what was this covenant that they needed to keep? Among the commandments that God commanded the people of Israel to keep, there was the first commandment. Isn't the first the most important? The content is recorded in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, where it says, You shall have no other gods before me. Then, did the people of Israel keep this covenant? No, they didn't. As we take a look at 1 Kings chapter 11, in the Old Testament, Solomon, who was a king of Israel, through worshipping other gods, they have broken the covenant just like Adam. Also, the physical Israelites who made a covenant with God rebelled and betrayed as it states in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7, there was fault that was found in the first covenant, which was the covenant with the chosen people who betrayed. So God promised to create a new thing through the prophet Jeremiah about 2,600 years ago. The new thing here refers to the new kingdom and new people of God without sin, not the world that has been passed down through the lineage of Adam who sinned. The creation of the new thing is completely through the new heaven and new earth Shincheonji recorded in Revelation chapter 21. Then what did God promise for the work of creating a new thing? There are two main things. First, in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 27, God promised to sow the two seeds. Second, God promised to make a new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 31. Then, when and through whom will this promise be fulfilled? After this was preached to Israel for about 600 years, God who promised this came to Jesus and fulfilled the promise. Let's take a look at the situation at the time of the first coming. At the first coming, according to the prophecy, two seeds were sown in Jesus' field in Matthew chapter 13. This was to fulfill the promise of sowing the two kinds of seeds in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27. Also, Jesus spoke about making a new covenant for the work of creating a new thing and as promised, the new covenant was made with the blood of Jesus in Luke chapter 22. This was to fulfill the promise of making a new covenant in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Then let's take a look at how the two seeds were sown at the first coming and when the realities of the two seeds will be distinguished. As we see in Matthew chapter 13, Jesus sowed the good seed in his field, and the enemy, the devil, sowed the weeds where the good seed was sown. Hence, two seeds were sown in the same field. Jesus, the owner, was afraid 
that the weeds will be pulled up with the wheat. So he said, let them both grow together until the time of harvest. What is the location this field is referring to where the seed was sown? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 24, it says that Jesus sowed the good seed in his field. And in verse 38, this field is the world. Then it would be the world of Jesus, Jesus' church. Then what are the two seeds referring to that were sown in Jesus' field, the church of Jesus? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 38, the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom, the sons of God. And the weeds are the sons of the evil one, sons of the devil. Then the sons of God and the sons of the devil will grow together in the same field until the time of harvest. Then the time when the sons of God and the sons of the devil will be distinguished will be the time of harvest. When the time of harvest comes, what will take place? Judgment and salvation will take place. The sons of God who are born with God's seed will be harvested to the barn and receive salvation. But the sons of the devil born with the devil's seed will remain in the field and receive judgment by fire. If you are a believer who hopes for heaven, you must confirm with the Bible whether this present time is a time of sowing the seed or if it is a time of harvest. If right now is a time of harvest, shouldn't we be harvested? Didn't it say that if you are not harvested, you will become the sons of the devil? These words are not my words. These are the words of Jesus. To be harvested or not harvested depends on heaven and hell. I would like for all of you to please keep this in mind. When is the time of harvest? Jesus said, Harvest is the end of age in Matthew chapter 13, verse 39. In order to understand when the end of age is, we will read Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Just like it says here in this verse, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. What is the gospel of the kingdom that will be preached in all the world? It is the prophecies of the four gospels of the New Testament and the prophecies of the book of Revelation. Also, this gospel of the kingdom has been preached in all the world for the past 2,000 years. But Jesus said, when the end comes, He'll return and make a new covenant. How can we know if right now is the time of the second coming? It is through harvest. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 39, it states harvest is the end of age because there is a fulfillment to the work of harvest, we can know that this present time is the end of age. Then let's read Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16, to see if the work of harvest is really promised at the time of Revelation fulfillment, the time of the Lord's second coming. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like a son of man, 
with a crown of gold on his head and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because a time to reap has come. for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. As you read here, there was really an angel harvesting the ripe in the field, just as Jesus had said. Then why does this harvest take place? Isn't it for the work of the creation of God's new kingdom and new people? Jesus sowed the seed at the first coming, and according to the promise He made about harvest, He came to the promised shepherd today and is fulfilling the work of harvest. then the two seeds that grew in the same field will be distinguished at the time of harvest. How will they be distinguished? Yes, just like how all of you know so well, the sons of God born with God's seed will be harvested to the barn and go to heaven. On the contrary, the sons of the devil are not harvested will remain in the field and go to hell. Then the Lord's second coming is a time of harvest, is the end of age. At the end of age, the traditional churches of the first heaven and the first earth that the devil has been ruling over will come to an end. And those born with God's seed will be harvested, sealed, the new heaven and new earth, new kingdom and new people. The 12 tribes will be created. Because this is a very important content, I will go over it again as I point to the board. The work regarding the end of the age is to put an end to the first heaven and first earth, the traditional church, harvest, seal, and create the 12 tribes of new heaven and new earth will be the work of the end of age. Then those who are harvested and seals with the word of revelation, the creation of the new kingdom and new people of the 12 tribes, when and after what work and how will they be created? It is to get rid of the old, corrupt era and to recreate a new nation. Which is why in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, the corrupted former heaven, the first heaven and first earth passes away and recreate the new heaven and new earth, new kingdom and new people. We can confirm through Revelation chapter 6 and Revelation chapter 7 the reality of the first heaven and first earth and new heaven and new earth. In Revelation 6, the reality of the first heaven and first earth is referring to the seven of stars that darken and fall, the traditional church that is judged. And in Revelation 7, The reality of the new heaven and new earth are those who have been harvested, sealed, the new kingdom and new people of the 12 tribes. We will find out how the traditional church that is being judged and the 12 tribes of the new kingdom and new people are promised out of the four Gospels of the New Testament in Matthew chapter 8, verses 11 to 12. As we see here, the traditional church that is being judged are the subjects of the kingdom that are thrown out in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11 to 12. And the new kingdom and new people, the 12 tribes in Revelation 7, are those who came from the east and west and sat down in the kingdom of heaven. What we need to remember here 
Is this promised new kingdom in Revelation 7? Is the kingdom of God created like a stamp just as it is in heaven in Matthew chapter 6? So the prophecy of the sowing of two seeds, the two seeds that were sown, the prophecy of the new covenant, the new covenant that was made, the prophecy about Jesus' return, and Jesus returning, the prophecy of the work of harvest, and the work of harvest that is taking place, the prophecy of the creation of the twelve tribes, and creating the twelve tribes. I hope all of you can understand that all of this was a process for accomplishing God's purpose. Then if the first heaven and the first earth passes away, in a new kingdom, new people were created. The dragon in Revelation 20 is captured and locked away, and the spiritual realm and the physical realm in Revelation 19 are married. The world where God can reign needs to fulfill, so God's purpose can also be fulfilled too. But if you tell this dragon to go to the abyss, will the dragon go on its own? No. Which is why there is war. Therefore, God made the new kingdom, new people as God's powerful soldiers fight against the enemy, the dragon, and win, and lock away the dragon into the abyss. So this war is so important. This is because the war between God and the devil, the two gods, that has existed for 6,000 years will come to an end only when the book of Revelation is fulfilled and the side that wins will rule and reign over this world. So who will win this battle? The soldiers of God or the soldiers of the dragon? As we see in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, a child born to a woman who has suffered harm and the brothers, the soldiers belonging to God, fought and overcame the group of the dragon. With what and how did they fight and win? They have conquered by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives, even unto death. Therefore, we can see that this war is not a physical war, but a spiritual religious war fought with words of their testimony. And those who overcome in Revelation chapter 12 become bowls that contain God's wrath and judge the betrayers and destroyers in Revelation chapter 15 and Revelation chapter 16. The reason why they are able to be used as God's bulls of wrath is because they are the witnesses who saw the betrayers and destroyers at the location where the event of revelation took place. In Revelation chapter 16, through those who overcome, God's wrath is poured out onto the betrayers and destroyers and are judged. As a result, the organization of the dragon, Babylon, was split into three parts. However, the judgment did not end here. In Revelation chapter 16, God carried out the work of judgment through those who overcome. Now, in Revelation 18, is God's direct judgment on Babylon, the home of demons. 
What would be the reason why God carries out this judgment? As it is said that the time of the Lord's second coming will be like the days of Noah and Lot, to judge the end of a corrupted era, God judges. But if these chosen people who are still captivated remain in Babylon, wouldn't it be impossible to judge? So in Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, it says, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. After God does the work of calling out God's people, God will judge Babylon with fire and plagues. It is the same when God judged with flood after Noah and his family got on the ark. Also, it was the same when God judged with fire after Lot and his family was taken out of Sodom and Gomorrah. This is how the war between God and the devil on Revelation ends in chapter 18. And now that the war against the devil has been won, there must be good things that happen, right? Now, in Revelation 19, the army of the white horse that belongs to God finally drives out the officials of Babylon who ran away while Babylon was being judged. As all of the dragon's minions are captured, there are no soldiers to help the dragon. So as a result, the dragon will be captured. This will be the final judgment against Babylon, capturing and locking away the dragon. And as we see in Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 3, an angel sees the dragon with a great chain. Here, seizing the dragon with a great chain means that you have captured the dragon with the word of testimony. What kind of creature was this dragon that was seized? This was a serpent that deceived Adam and God who left the world because of the devil and Satan who took away the world, all things that were created and even the hearts of the people for 6,000 years. Now that the dragon has been seized and thrown into the abyss, there will no longer be the work of deception. What we need to understand here is God has been working till this day to seize the dragon. So at the time of Revelation, the work of harvest, sealing, creating the new kingdom, new people of the 12 tribes, war with the group of the dragon, judging the betrayers and destroyers, also judging Babylon and capturing the dragon. I hope you can all perceive this is all part of the process to accomplish God's purpose. Now that the dragon is seized, what work will take place? God's final purpose will be fulfilled. That is, where the spiritual realm and the physical realm will become one, marriage of the spirit and flesh, where God can finally reign. In order to understand this, we will read Revelation chapter 19, verse 1 to 6. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven, shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are His judgments. 
He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you His servants, you who fear Him, both small and great. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Just like we have read, the spiritual realm and the physical realm become one. The marriage of spirit and flesh and God's reign will be fulfilled. In Revelation 18, the home of demons Babylon, marrying the demons and became one with the devil, which is why after God judges Babylon in Revelation chapter 18, in Revelation 19, God, Jesus, the souls of the martyrs will become one with those who have been invited to the wedding banquet according to the promise. Spiritual marriage will take place. What will take place now? Those who married at the wedding banquet of the Lamb will participate in the first resurrection in Revelation chapter 20. And in Revelation 21, God in heaven will come down to Shincheonji so that the reign of God that God has so longed for and desired will be fulfilled. This is the fulfillment of the new covenant, the fulfillment of God's purpose and our hope, which is the kingdom of heaven and eternal life. I will organize today's word. The title of today's lesson is God's purpose. God's purpose is to get rid of the first heaven and first earth, harvest and seal the sons of God born with God's seed, to create the new kingdom and new people of the twelve tribes, to capture and throw the dragon into the abyss, who took away all things God has created in the hearts of people. In the spiritual realm and physical realm becoming one, marriage of the spirit and flesh, God's reign is God's purpose. All of God's purpose and will that will accomplish were recorded in the prophecies of the four Gospels of the New Testament and the Book of Revelation. And it has been and fulfilling in this way today. We, the twelve tribes of Shincheonji, are witnessing and preaching to the whole world because we have mastered the Bible and know the purpose and will of God. At a time where God's purpose is being completed, who am I according to the Bible? Have I been created according to the Bible? Please confirm and become part of the family of God's new kingdom and new people of the twelve tribes and fulfill your hope of heaven and eternal life in the world of peace ruled by God. Next time, you will learn Intermediate Lesson 15 regarding God's food and Satan's food. The instructor who will lecture the next lesson will be able to convey the message much better than me. I hope to see all of you again next time with a heart of hope and anticipation. Lastly, we are one in God, in Jesus, and in the Bible. I will shout, we are one. It will be greatly appreciated if you can join us. 
We are one in God, Jesus, and the Bible. We are one. We will lift up a prayer to our Father God. Father God, we truly thank you so much. We sincerely thank you so much for giving us the food of heaven today. Father, as you have desired, we, those born of God's seed, will be harvested and sealed, become part of the twelve tribes, defeat the dragon, and when God reigns, please grant us the blessing of heaven and eternal life in the eternal kingdom of God, the world of peace. To all the precious hearts that was in attendance in today's seminar, Father, please protect them like the apple of your eye and grant them strength in spirit and in flesh. Please guide us so that we can receive grace together in the next lecture. We give all thanks to you and pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening till the end. In the Bible, there's a food that gives eternal life if you eat it, and another food that will surely kill you if you were to eat it. Have you heard of such things? Where is a place we can eat this important food of eternal life at the time of the second coming? We pray and wish that you'll truly perceive and eat the food of eternal life to receive the coming kingdom of heaven and eternal life. I believe everyone's had a precious time of perceiving God's purpose through the word that was testified today. God's purpose is to harvest those who have been born of God's seed and seal them and create the new kingdom and new people who are the 12 tribes of Shinshanji. Having understood this, many pastors from churches around the world are signing MOU with Shinshanji. I'd like to pray and wish that all of you who are watching this video will also take part in the 12 tribes of Shinshanji, the kingdom of heaven on earth God created as promised, and receive heaven and eternal life. Next time, God's Word will be testified under the title of Intermediate Lesson 15, God's Food and Satan's Food. Our next seminar will start at the same time as it did today. Please do attend and perceive the true meaning of God's Word. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or the Revealed Word, please call the number on your screen to ask them. We'll make sure to guide you kindly in detail. We'll conclude today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for being with us today, family of God.